Oh my gosh, hi, welcome back. We're gonna jump straight into this with the Victorinox Florist Knife. We're obviously going to sharpen it with the Garden Sharp Beveled Edge Knife Sharpening Tool. This is a handy dandy tool I use every time I design and even in between designing arrangements. I'm also using the famous Zenport Shears. And now we're starting, oh yes, dance break already, you know it the best raspberry hydrangea ever if this is your first time here um i have explained this in other videos but i always go in and clean up all of the nodes on the stems nodes are any places where leaves or buds or other types of laterals stick out and the reason why i clean all of this off is because with the chicken wire grid and because we're using so many flowers it's important to clean those up because if you need to change the placement of the stem as you're inserting it and when you're taking it out cleaning all of those nodes makes that whole action so much easier so much more fluid in your design flow your workflow so that's just a huge big tip that i really recommend um, when you're doing the style pave arrangement and probably any style arrangement to be frank especially when using a structure like this I do not use Oasis Floral Foam. It is a big no-no on my channel. I haven't used it for years. I actually, there's only one person and one arrangement that I design once a year <laughs> or maybe twice a year that I use um, Oasis Floral Foam for. It's something that I kind of can't. And I know that sounds funny, but it's something that I almost can't get away without for this particular arrangement. But other than that, everything you see here on this channel is designed foam free, baby. Oh yeah. This shocking pink carnation. I don't know what it is, but sometimes they just come in slightly different nuances of shades. And this particular one had a little bit more of a cool blue undertone to it. And it was just like, oh my God, slightly brighter and more vibrant than normal. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I'm looking or seeing the flowers on a specific day, but I truly think there is that level of nuance where sometimes the same exact variety, and I know actually this is true, but the same exact variety will not look the same at all times of the, the year, and also depending on who's growing it and where they're growing it and the weather conditions. So when you see, for instance, a particular rose that you like, this has happened with a couple of the kind of mauve, garden rose um or yeah there's a couple that are like oh, I'm trying to remember the name right now it's not at the tip of my tongue obviously but there's a couple of like lavender rose varieties for instance that i've gone and i'm like ooh, sometimes they they look beige almost and that is all highly dependent on the grower so all that to say offering your clients an exact thing is a tricky game. Now we have really special hearts rows. And what I'm doing here is fluffing these out. And this is really good for this particular rose because it's a cup shaped rose. It has a very ruffled texture. And if you don't have the time to let them naturally open out, you can by hand, not reflex, because I don't think this rose really looks that great reflex, but that's just my opinion. You can go ahead and experiment with that. But if you like the ruffled texture and you just want it to look a little bit more open, you can go ahead and fluff those out. And of course, I'm cleaning off any of the calyx, damaged petals, and again, trimming off any of the nodes, foliage, all of that stuff. The foliage and the thorns and all of that come off in the initial preparation stage where I'm 
essentially prepping the flowers for design and putting them in flower food, letting them hydrate and open out a little bit before I design with them. And then the next day when I go to design with them, then they're a little bit more open, but there's still some cleaning to do. So if you like all of the tips that I've offered thus far, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. You know what to do. Do your tithing. Get in there, girl. <laughs> tithe. tithe away. You can tithe by subscribing. You can tithe by hitting the like button. You can tithe by sending actual money. Down in the description box below is a link to my Venmo, my Chase Zell, and whatever you feel like sending really does help to support this channel. I do not yet have a Patreon and I'm not sure that I'm going to. I really just want to provide as much information as I can with the resources that I currently have. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> ah! Oh, the best. Don't even. These arrangements like knocked me on my ass. They were so, so, so pretty. This is a Valentine's Day flashback. I had multiple really large scale um, orders and this was one of them. Well, I wouldn't say really large scale, but probably larger scale than the average arrangement. These were about 28 inches wide, 26 inches-ish depth and about 25 inches height. So roughly about 28 inches cubed, if you wanna call it that. Dense with gorgeous, premium, luxury, stunning <laughs> flowers. This ranunculus variety did not come with a name, but I'm going to guess that it was not a Clooney Nerone because the Clooney Nerone pictured here is very dark. Okay, this run, I, I almost don't even wanna share the name of this rose because it's like, I just don't want people to find out my secrets, you know? So normally, <laughs> normally I link the recipe down below for you completely for free, but since this is a signature arrangement, I'm not going to reveal any more names. I'm just gonna keep them secret and you can do re the reverse engineering if you want. This is the signature Venus arrangement. And strangely, Everyone who ordered this year ordered the Venus arrangement. I don't know why it happened that way. Maybe I've been putting it out into the universe, like this is my favorite thing to design and so that's why everyone ordered it for Valentine's Day. But I also think that people are just really feeling it. Like the ladies are really feeling this palette and it was a total vibe for Valentine's Day. I'm super glad that all of the arrangements I designed ended up being this particular palette. So I, you can see here, I'm kind of going in and tweaking everything. And with this style arrangement, this is also essential. And I realized as I was designing it, one of the things that maybe I haven't articulated in other videos, but is important to know is I, ha oh my God, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if it's really coming across on camera, but this is one of my favorite, super, super deep burgundy roses. It's, it's one of my favorite. I love how pointy the petals are. It's just spectacular. Over the moon about them. If you can guess the name of this rose, go ahead and comment, comment it below. Um, let's see if you guess it correctly. But going back to what I was saying about like designing this style arrangement is so tricky because it is an enormous balancing act. And I realized that when I was designing it, I was like, you know, because I don't use Oasis floral foam and because I do use a large quantity of flowers and stems, I had to design my grid in such a way that it would allow space, enough space inside of the vase to fit all of the stems, 
Oh my God, is this the end of the tutorial already? Oh my God, I just really got off to talking too much there. But basically, it's a fucking balancing act. It is like so challenging and difficult. And if you wanna hear more about that in another video, let me know in the cons comments below. Let's talk about it in another video. Do you need to understand this concept more? Do you want me to go in depth about it? Because this, I think that this is actually quite unique to how I design because of the shape vases that I use, the amount of product that I use, the type of product I use, the shape of the range, the whole thing, like the whole design, it does really require um, like a strange balancing act. So if you want more in depth on that, comment below. We'll cover that in another video. And also let me know if there's something else that you want to learn. Um, this was an oval shaped arrangement. It is extremely difficult to execute and you can tell like there's a little bit of wonkiness as I'm turning it. It's not like this 100% perfect oval shape. There is a little bit of wonkiness to it and I kind of like that. I think it gives it some character. But for that reason, it's like one of the most challenging shapes to design. And for that reason, I like it because every time I design, I feel like I get a little bit closer to exactly the shape that I'm going for. So here we are with the end results. I hope that you were entertained. I hope that your Valentine's Day was super juicy and fun. This was by far the best Valentine's Day I've ever had at Flora Lux and super grateful to everyone who has supported the work. So thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you in the next video.